Did you know that you can use our Slick Pour dipping powder as a color acrylic to create amazing acrylic designs? Tracy's gonna do a full set acrylic using the Slick Pour also as a dipping powder. All of this right now in real time. Okay, this is a really interesting set because you're doing a full set acrylic. You're using, I'm gonna pull it out, this one product right here, which is our Slick Pour Powder. Typically, it's used for dip, but what people don't know, Trace, is you can use it for so many things. What are you gonna do with this today? We're gonna use this probably in two different ways. I'm gonna use it as a straight colored acrylic. Okay. This stuff is amazing for colored yeah, acrylic. You use right. it with the monomer, it, it just like butter. Use it just like you do any of our art powders. And then um, I think I'm gonna do a little uh, conversion gel with this on top. Nice. That way the surface, and when I maintain, it's not gonna be that difficult. Right, and you're also gonna use it as uh, a dip powder, you're gonna powder coat yeah, a couple with, nails. with the conversion gel. Oh, with the conversion yeah. gel. Got it, got yeah, it, yeah. got it, okay. So, yeah, it, I think, if I really think about it, I would say this is one of the most important things you can have at your desk, because I literally will mix this with gel. Yeah. I'll powder coat it with gel. I'll use it as a regular resin dip. Right. And monomer, like right. it, it's, and you get a lot. It's just, it's amazing. I think what people don't understand is that Dipping powder overall is just acrylic powder. It's acrylic powder and typically it's used with a resin glue for the dip look. This is acrylic powder, okay? It's really fine, right? It's really fine, super, yeah. super fine, super smooth. We have 108 colors. Just a few. Just a few. Mm -hmm. You can use as color acrylic. Tracy is gonna do that right now. This design is incredible. I think you're gonna love it. Tracy, are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, Doki, let's start by pushing back our cuticles. First thing we always do, it's nice to have Habib back mm -hmm. with the one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we're pushing back the cuticles, guys, we're really not gonna overthink it. This is where I used to waste a lot of time because I would kind of push it back and then I'd rethink it and I, I just thought it had to be this whole process. We're just gently pushing back and then we'll let the electric file kind of take care of the rest. So we're just getting all the way through. And again, this is our time to really check things out. She have anything broken, anything lifted, whatever. Ooh, I lost the cord to my electric file. That's gonna cost. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have our medium sanding band on our file. You can also use that medium cross cut. Again, I can't find mine. I really need a stack of like 20 of them. Just lightly going through. Guys, the first thing I want you to pay attention to is that very, very back end. I've already seasoned my bit or my sanding band. That way I don't cut her. It's the first thing I do when I put it on the electric file before my client shows up. So you just kind of run it across the file. I'm gonna pull back that skin, run through, remove the shine from the top. The most important thing that I'm paying attention to right now is that cuticle area. Run through, remove the shine. Just doesn't need to take that much time. This is where we can really overthink things. I used to come in and do this, then I'd come back in with the hand file, and then I'd go back with the electric file. Stuff can you kind of turn that way, perfect. So, I don't know, how much time did you use to spend on this part, Steph? Um, well, when I first started, it took me a lot longer, but after a lot of practice and training with you guys, about three to five minutes. Yeah, and this is where I think a lot of people are afraid of that cuticle area and why you have to practice on yourself. So vital, so important. I don't care if you're a guy, you have to know how much pressure you can put and how it feels. You'll realize really quick that you can tuck into that cuticle area and it really doesn't hurt. We'll just keep it in motion. Okay, well, that part is done. Let's grab our swipe, my brush. I'll dust you off real quick. That's just kind of getting the loose stuff off and I'll pump some swipe on there. Go through, clean it out. 
just going to pull everything out of there. You can see I'm not, for me, this is faster. If I just pump it on a brush and swipe it clean again, the brush is clean. I'm not using the same shimegi brush over and over and over. It's faster than just grab, grabbing a lamp free. Okay, protein bond. I was going into how much there, <laughs> showing everything. And we're gonna protein bond all the way through. With protein bond, guys, we need to make sure that we're hitting the whole surface of the nail. It doesn't spread like an acid primer. It's gonna stay sticky to the surface. So we wanna make sure that we're covering everything. But don't overdo it. Don't oversaturate. Because if you flood that cuticle area, you can cause lifting. So it's kind of the perfect amount. And if you find that all of a sudden your clients are coming in with lifting, and you're like, I really haven't changed any of my prep work, this is where we tend to start getting lazy and sloppy. We'll just kind of flood everything. And you could probably take it back to too much protein bond being used. Going to go in with our second coat. We don't have to wait. Once you're done with that 10th finger, you just go right into it. So we're going to be using some slip pour on you today, huh, Steph? Mm -hmm. What I love what we're doing is I know that most people know slip pour as like a, a dip, mm -hmm. but we're going to show them how to use it as a colored acrylic, which it works amazing for. There's so many good colors. Okay, let's grab our forms. So we're just going to take it, push it back. Don't overthink this part, guys. This is where we can think overthink again. If you notice, I'm not trying to make sure that that tab that I push back is completely even and solid. I just push it back. As long as it's not in the way of that center circle, you're good to go. Okay, get it on there. Secure her. Come in. Nice. What would you say are some good speed techniques for um, someone starting out doing nails? With the forms? Mm -hmm. With the forms, this for me was practice, practice, practice. And I'll tell you how I did it because I did tips for six years. Is I started doing all my repairs with forms. Mm -hmm. And anybody that came in, new sets, I would do. And it got me out of my fear. Mm -hmm. Plus, learning to just put them on, just, mm -hmm. just get them on. I would sit there and I would adjust them and overthink it and like, okay, that tab has to be perfectly even and it doesn't. We just have to get it on. We have to make sure that those sidewalls are free so the product can go straight, that the forms are on even. Let's check your middle finger who hates mm -hmm. me <laughs> so much. This is the time to make those adjustments. Get a little tighter all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna form one hand. This is another speed technique, guys, is I only try to form the hand that I have a hold of because your client will jack up their nails and you'll end up with your forms back. I'm pulling everything out on the table. We have tippy, tipsy goss, tipsy gossip, is that it? <laughs> tippy gossip. I can talk. Tipsy gops, gossip, gossip, <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> oh well, that, yeah. you say it, Steph. Tippy gossip. Thank you. <laughs> and tippy cup. Is this tippy cup? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turquoise. We have metallic dark blue. We have turquoise. We have kitty blitz of the slip pour. And we have triple X white. We have all kinds of things going on. We'll, we'll list them for you guys. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go through. Now this nail I'm actually going to just do in pink. Because I am going to powder coat it on top. So I'm not gonna use the slip pour as a colored acrylic in this situation. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Any nail that I'm gonna top coat with like, uh, like a, a gel polish, or like I'm gonna powder coat this with a slip pour in conversion gel, then there's no point for me to actually do it in the acrylic. I'm just gonna do it in pink. This is kind of another, Speed technique. We have our air conditioning on. First acrylic of the day. Well, give me a second to get adjusted. Um, is anything that I can do in pink, I do in pink. And that way when I go to remove, let's say she wanted pink and whites, or she wanted pink with a smile line, I'm always using my pink as a base for the most part. That way it's easier when I go to maintain. 
Okay, Pinky, you're being difficult for the first nail of the day. <laughs> but that's how it is. You're using the new brush? I am, and this is gonna help us with time too. Again, I'm getting adjusted, but we can pick up a lot of acrylic with this. Okay, I'm feeling good about it. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the art one, and I'm gonna take clear. Where did I do with clear? And I'm actually going to cover your nail bed with a little clear. This is gonna protect it, and again, I'm always thinking about the maintenance part. I'm gonna do your extension with clear. That way, when I go to remove this whole nail, you'll see, because I'm gonna cover her whole nail in a design. When I go to maintain it, when I go to remove it, I can file electric file down to that clear and not hit her natural nail. So again, maybe not faster this time, but it's gonna help me down the road in my speed because when I go to do maintenance, it's gonna be so much easier. Okay, let's get our clear. And you're building this really thin, right? This is super thin because I wanna get the artwork in and not have to worry about that I'm gonna file it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna be using that one I can't pronounce today. <laughs> Tippy Gossip. Thank you. As It's kind of like a surf, like on the beach. I'm gonna use it really wet, guys. You're just getting the look. Think of uh, using it as a, almost like a paint at this point. I'm just getting the vibe of it. Let's go into our triple X white. Kind of our spray from the ocean. I'm gonna go into our tippy cup. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> These do look very oceany. I like it a lot. It means we need a vacation. Mm -hmm. Go into our surf. Make sure we get enough of that on. And I'm gonna use a little metallic blue just to darken that tip up. Get all the way up there the ocean going through each other. And then I do this a lot. I use the glitter raw. So I'm actually using surf straight out of the jar. I'm not mixing it with colored acrylic. Another speed technique. Right? Another speed technique because I can get it really nice and thin and just push it into that wet acrylic mm -hmm. and not have to worry about it. So it is another, you don't have to. And honestly, it just depends what mood I'm in <laughs> that day. And then we're gonna use a little bit of that Kitty Blitz up here. Now again, this is nice and thin. This is where we can cost ourselves a lot of time when we're doing art, is we start overthinking it, right? We're like, oh, the placement has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Just get it on, cap it and clear, and call it a day. It's gonna be beautiful. Half of the art that I do, I don't like while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I like it when it's done though. I used to constantly, like when I was doing a set, I would be, I think I just looked at them for too long, so I would be kind of over it. And then the client would come back for the next appointment. I'm like, oh, those are pretty. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> it's so true. You can really start, it starts kind of looking at you funny and mm -hmm. cross-eyed and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure if I liked those. And they come in and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. happy. So we're just taking a big ball of clear, getting that structure. Guys, this is a faster way also. Get your strength with your clear. Not only is it cheaper to do so, I don't know why I tell them cheaper ways of doing it. <laughs> I want you to buy more product. Um, <laughs> but it's faster. Okay, this one we're gonna do in pink too. Let's go ahead and put your finger down. Habib, how are we doing with my head? Not good. Ooh, good. It's about time. <laughs> We're gonna do this one in pink because I think we're gonna do this one in a go time color. So I'm just gonna. Really using every medium here today. And this is part of it, right? Like, and if you start overthinking it, like, okay, which nail is gonna get what? If you notice, I'm just each nail as I go through it, I grab the product. I'm not going, okay, this nail and this nail are gonna do pink. So I do those on both hands and then I go back and, okay, this one's getting artwork. You can do it that way. I don't find it faster. I find it faster just kind of work with it as you go. Mm -hmm. Grab as you go. Plus, I'm never quite sure of the final look. Mm -hmm. So I'm making it up it. as you go. I gotta make it, definitely make it up as we go. 
as we say, the nails speak to us. Mm -hmm. So get a giant pearl. Let's get it there. And let's get that on. That is a massive pearl. That's what I like about this brush. Yep. Get that upper arch really quick. Juggle it in place. I love working with the product in a clay form, guys. It's a speed technique too. So if you notice, I'm not really working with it really, really wet. In fact, there's times if it is wet, it's warm in here right now. So it's not, we're not having that problem. But if you are having a problem where it feels really wet, just stop, give it five seconds. I do mm -hmm. this with the OWC students all the time. I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, let's count to five. They're like, no, 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 I have to go. And it's like, if you just give the product a second, we're going into that clear again. If you just give the product a second, it will work for you and not against you. And it seems like, oh, I, I need to be working at it right away. I need to be hitting that nail, but Trust me, it's faster if you just give it a few minutes. So with acrylic, the room temperature is a factor? Oh, right? yeah. When it gets hot, it's like working with cement. Mm -hmm. A lot more liquid. You can really control a lot of things with your liquid ratio, but it just becomes more difficult. Yeah, I tend to work a lot wetter when it's warm. Also, the what's the difference between the acrylic line? With the core and the speed. So, hold on. I can't talk while I do the white next to the cuticle. <laughs> so again, I really kind of liking core white. Not core white. This is triple X white mm -hmm. or speed white. As this kind of thin, 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 pretty kind of white on the nail. I tried it out the other day and I'm like, ooh, I kind of like it. Something a little different, a little brighter than the core white. Yeah. But... Again, I'm working with it really, really wet around that cuticle. It'll make your life easier. It'll kind of flow into the cuticle area. And that way you can work it. White is such a pain in the butt to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was your question? Sorry. The difference between core and speed acrylic. So core is just a slower setting. Speed's faster. We do have different colors in both lines. So your speed technique is I really like working with speed powders, especially in the winter. Mm -hmm. That way it sets up faster. Um, and in the, I'm double dipping into the surf, no turquoise and tippy cup. Trying to get it no wet. Um, I'm making that nail heck along. So you gotta use what's gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. if, you if it's moving too fast, then you need to maybe switch to core or use more liquid mm -hmm. in the, winter speed technique is use that speed powder we usually we have the same you know kind of the same colors and then like covers are right in the middle get off of there <laughs> yeah i usually recommend for people during the summer to use core or people that you know customers in vegas and all the hot mm -hmm. places i i well we lived in northern california right mm -hmm. 110, yeah. 120 in yeah. the summer. And she, believe me, I don't care how cool we had it in the um, s salon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was, it was literally like working with cement. So you're definitely going to want, that's why I always say it takes like, what, three nails to kind of figure yeah. out the room temperature. Well, and even um, the person's body temperature like mm -hmm. if you come in and you're freezing or if you come in and you're all hot it, it changes the set times yeah in the winter to speed things up i would put my customer's hands on a heating pad while i got everything ready yeah i did the same toast them up i had a heating pad underneath my table towels on my desk so i have forgotten to go through and pinch but we have a pretty good curve in your forms which is another speed technique mm -hmm. if you have a good curve in your forms you don't necessarily have to come back and pinch. I like to, but if you forget, it's not the end of the world. You're still gonna have a really good C curve in them. Okay. So if you notice, I'm working with that product kind of really wet to build out the form, uh, what would you call this? Free edge. Free edge, thank you. Stephanie will be my dictionary today. Oh, it's Monday. Me. It's Monday. Like, we're all having a Monday, yeah. so. <laughs> so true. 
Um, and that kind of just, I can guide it into place. That way I'm not sitting there trying to push, push, push. Then this part, I'm gonna work more in a clay form. Sometimes I even bleed it out a little bit. That's just gonna set it up faster for me. Sorry, Hubby, but I feel like my head's in the way. Am I okay? You're good on this one. Okay. I apologize, guys. I know I don't have an attractive head. <laughs> so let's make sure we get all the way to the sides. And that's good. What are you looking at when you turn to the side? I'm really checking for that upper arch and that you have enough product in your stress area. Where is that? Right in there. <laughs> <laughs> right where it tends to crack. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like it. Next, I feel like I have, mm. oh, that was nice. Well, we have a- I know where we can get more. Hey, yeah, <laughs> it's off camera, no one can see it. <laughs> Just built kitty blitz everywhere, but it's really pretty, so we're good. Let's get the foams on this one. I'm gonna have you bring your hands up a little bit closer. Perfect, there we go. Guys, another speed technique for forms is actually stuff, your nails are kind of rounding out. She has one or two square, but it's working for me today. Mm -hmm. I would pre-do my squares and just put them back on the wax paper. Mm -hmm. And that way if a client came in, I didn't actually have to cut it at the time. Yeah. I would do it while I was just sitting there. We all have spare time. We all have that cancellation. Mm -hmm. It's making the most of it while we do. Yeah, if I ever had any like cancellations in my day or something, I tried to stay productive, That's even if I wasn't do. actually doing nails. I would use that as time to like do your marketing on social media. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just you or practice speed. Yeah, or sit there and practice on myself. Yeah. Um, it was just always I was very aware of like making the most of my time, especially if I was at work already. I just felt like I should be doing something like that rather than just you know online shopping or something. <laughs> Figured it should yeah, always it, be like work-based. It always would cost me money when my clients didn't show up. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, I shouldn't charge them for the missed appointment. I should charge them for the fortune I just spent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to like make sure we don't have any crooked ones now. This takes time, but it's going to take you more time if you realize you have a crooked now. So let's see. Let's do this one in clear. We had a question the other day that was, um, what do you do when, you've, when you're getting to the point where you're uh, needing to apply and your client hasn't made a decision on what they want? No, that's actually fundamental to your speed, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if a client hasn't made a decision, <laughs> that's gonna cost you time. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm very much about open communication with mm -hmm. our client, and that's one of those situations you need to communicate the fact that they need to know what they want by the time you're ready, mm -hmm. preferably before time. And mm -hmm. now that we have Instagram and things like that, they really should know. Mm -hmm. Scrap the white, I think we'll do this one in white. So, um, if, and if they don't, tell them it's dealer's choice. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> I was like, if they knew for the most part that that was when they needed to have a decision made. And if they didn't, then it was artist pick and I mean, most of the time they're fine with it. And the same thing as what you were saying with open communication. I would just let them know that, like, you know, in order to stay on time for my day, for my other clients, I need you to at least be able to make that call. Like, if you needed to come in early to look at colors or if you needed to go through Instagram while we sit here. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine going to the doctor and going, I don't know if I want a mammogram today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do I want? Yeah. Like, you need to know. So... Yeah, and I mean, you can usually like discuss while you're working. Um, like while I was filing, I was fine with, you know, what do you think about this color or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So that was, but by the time it came to apply, I was like, all right, time's up. Guys, th this Mylar, I am literally just picking it out of the jar and slapping it on. We tend to waste a lot of time when it comes to Mylar. Like, oh, I just need a piece right there. Mylar is beautiful wherever you stick it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to look at her other hand and decide which nail she has more mylar on. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Great. It's clear. But I think overthinking and overworking is probably the biggest um, like setbacks for speed. 
It is. And I was uh, queen of them all <laughs> for a long time. I really was. And that's why I tell people like, please don't sit here and watch this and think I started this way because I did not. Mm -hmm. First full set, about five hours. Mm -hmm. Bless you, mom. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it wasn't like the next set was three. It was still five hours. Right. Um, it took a while. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that day that I was like, oh my God, did I just do a set in an hour yeah. or an hour and a half, whatever it was. And it's like, okay, it, it really is the technique first and mm -hmm. speed second. Yeah. If you get that down, get a little more clear right there, then um, the speed will come. And sometimes we fall back into bad habits, right? We fall into like, if you notice like your time is starting to slow down, it's probably because you're picking up a bad habit again. Maybe it's you're prepping too much. Maybe your bits are dull and you're fighting it. We tend to do that. Like if you notice your time is going up, first thing I want you to do is check out your bits. Mm -hmm. You know, if your bits are dull and they'll never look dull, if they're dull, then you are gonna have a hard time. The minute you feel like you're putting pressure, the minute your client starts telling you that it hurts, um, any of those are a really good indication that your bit is toast and it will cost you a lot of time. About how often do you think people should change out their bits? If I was doing this kind of work in salon all day long, I would change my um, core safety bit or X cut once a week. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but you know what's going to cost me a lot of money is wasting time. It's about having the proper tool and it being properly sharp. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that I tossed it. I would downgrade it and I would use it for, um, sorry, let's look at you sideways. We got a little more right there. Um, I would just downgrade it to like gel, yeah, hard gel. And then it can be downgraded again to maybe like a, um, uh, a gel polish. So you get use out of it, but just don't, force it. If, if you feel like you're forcing it, it's time to move on. So it's all, it's all learning, right? Like, yeah, a lot of people with some of the comments on the real times, uh, that's, they're like, how, how, how I'm like, it's really the, I wish there was some secret answer. I wish there was a magic but answer. Truthfully, it's just repetition. It is. And just, and there's, you know, great tips here, Yep. but, um, the speed is going to come with doing it a million and one times. And yeah, practice, practice, practice. It, it's, and, and that's why practicing on yourself is so important to me because I would probably never like use the electric file the way I use it, especially with like removing gel polish, if I didn't know it didn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't use it on myself and go, oh, okay, cool. I can, I can use that pressure and it's not a big deal then um, I would be afraid of it. And if you're afraid of it, that's gonna cost you time too. Yeah, I always, anything that I had that was new, it was always applied on myself first. Just because I wanted to know, like even when I started using gel, I didn't understand it. And so I put one hand gel and one hand acrylic. And um, I just wanted to see, like I have to see things for myself. Yeah. I can't like take someone's word for it. So I wanted to, stuff like I'm not taking anybody's word for I know I just don't I know, even you guys I never believe you guys when you tell me something and then I try it and I'm like oh yeah it worked <laughs> that's okay you come around every and it's always things that I made fun of like when I got out of beauty school I made fun of forms a lot because oh I was God. like they made tips for a reason like that's dumb why would you go back to that and then now I'm like oh okay. so well you know what I was told hmm. oh that's such an old school way of doing mm -hmm. it like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to be up to date. Like, yeah. I, I need to do tips. And I did tips for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I had a very successful career with it. But I would get the air pockets and all those things that are going to cost you time. And I didn't realize it was because of the, the tip. Mm -hmm. So, again, guys, when you just real wet, and I'm just going back in with some liquid, making it a little more wet, and picking up my stuff. And that way, it's going to be shallow so I don't file things out. Okay, let's cap you. It's starting to get toasty. <laughs> you know what helps? Having liquid. Another speed technique is having liquid in your jar. <laughs> it helps.
helps a lot. I don't know how many times I'll sit there and fight. And I'm like, okay, Tracy, this just one. be an adult and grab some more liquid. <laughs> that truly is a speed technique, though, having everything ready that you're going to use before your client gets there. Mm -hmm. Even if you maybe don't, don't know the design, you, you know that you need your forms out, you know that you need your liquid and full, you know. I mean, if you guys could see right now, I actually have toenail clippers. I didn't think I would need them, but you never know. I have scissors. It's just in case I had to customize a form. I have an extra brush sitting out just in case this starts getting gunked up. Gunked, it's a technical mm -hmm. word. Um, I have all that stuff sitting here. That way I wouldn't sit here and go, oh my gosh, my brush is, is, is causing me time because it's all gunky but I have to force myself to use it because I don't have an extra right you have to have you have to ha you have to be prepared mm -hmm. okay I'm liking it let's just do how many sleep pour colors do we have <sighs> 108 well that you guys know of <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. we need like some theme music like some effects music in here <laughs> So guys, we have I, we get a lot of questions about when are you coming out with more colored acrylic? When are you coming out? So guys, I just to go right here before I start the finish what I was just saying. I don't have enough product. I'm not going to sit there and spread it out. I'm just going to grab more and finish it off. Instead of just fighting it, fighting it, and fighting it when I have to add more anyway, just stop. Mm -hmm. Add more. So we keep on getting asked, when are you getting more colored acrylic? We have 108 other colored acrylics, neons, glitters. It's in slick pour. And I know that it's hard to, it was hard for me to grasp. I'm like, no, 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 that, but that's dip. It's acrylic. It's a very fine acrylic and it works amazing for art. You can use it exactly the same way you use our imagination art powders. You can use it exactly the same. So, and the colors are really, really pretty. There's a lot of very vibrant colors. And more to come, a lot more. Mm -hmm. So, wait for it. So, no more questions about when we're getting them. We have them. <laughs> Question answered. Yes. Yes. So let's grab right here. So, if I was coming back with this set on, what would you do then? I'd cry. <laughs> So again, it's setting myself up for maintenance and it depends what you want on top. If you were good with being able to see some of this artwork below, I would probably just um, do like a gel polish over the top mm -hmm. or add on. So a lot of uh, people ask, you know, well, you're charging so much for that artwork. It's like, listen, you can actually recycle it, recycle it, like cut in a little bit, mm -hmm. thin it out in an area, uh, an area add a little different glitter, add a little mylar, add whatever you want. Yeah. I had that happen. They would get like, I had a one set that was like all of our mylars and glitters encased. And I think she wore it for like four appointments in a row. Yeah. And we just kept doing different things. Like one point I hand painted over it. One point we stamped over it. Um, so yeah, it can be recycled. And I think that set was like 130 or something and then she kept it for four more times. So I'm like, that yeah. seems fair. You know, you're really getting your money's worth out of it. Yeah, she might add a glitter, mm -hmm. five bucks here, five bucks there, plus a, just a basic fill. It's It it really is just communication, right? Mm -hmm. like, however, if you didn't, if you weren't okay with it or you wanted the change to like a pink and white, remember these nails I did all pink in, so we're good. Just make sure we have enough there. We're just gonna pop a little bit right there. Okay, let's move all my stuff. I'm gonna spill this up. one too. Oh, I'm t am I attached? Mm -hmm. Let's try not to spill it this time. Um, <laughs> my table is very pretty right now, guys. You should see it. We're just, like re. We're just no. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, re. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's remove the forms and see what we got going on. I think the table towels are helpful too because you can easily kind of just clean up, clean up. and yeah, like I can just take this, grab my trash can, glitter's done. My pants are very pretty, mm -hmm. custom made. I get asked a lot, where did you get your jeans? I'm like um, custom, mm -hmm. very custom. So we're gonna switch out to our cross or 
coarse safety bit. And let's do some filing. Gonna turn our electric file up. And again, for me, I like to do this shaping with my bit versus picking up my hand file. Sorry, Steph, I just need to see a little bit more. There we go. Um, versus picking up my hand file, filing those side walls, and then going back to this part. Mm -hmm. um, it's just preferred for me. Um, but some people prefer to file the side walls first. What, what do you do? Um, what you're doing, what? I use my, I use the e-file for like 99.9% mm -hmm. of the set. Like I don't, I just don't like to hand file very much. Yeah. Um, so my prep work is the e-file. My shaping is the e-file. I really just do like a quick side walls and free edge with the hand file at the end. Yep. You guys, I'm working with this. Um, I'm working with my electric okay, file. file. Thank you. On about 16,000 RPMs. So guys, she doesn't have enough product right here. Sometimes artwork's deceiving. I'm gonna grab my brush. I'm gonna grab my clear. I'm gonna pop it right on there, right where I need it. And I'm gonna move on. We'll come back to it. If you see something like that, fix it. Don't leave it. Don't go, oh shoot. I don't wanna have to go back to it. It literally will cost me two seconds of my time. And now I know she won't break it there. And it's better than having me come back with a broken one. Yeah. That's Talk about take time. time. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're really looking at speed, then we have to think about all this stuff, right? Maintenance, repairs. We have to look at it as a whole. So again, I'm working with about 16,000 RPMs. And um, I know some people, when they're first starting, because they're very afraid of the electric file, will work on a lower speed. And that is actually not only gonna cost you time, it hurts more to the client than if you would just turn it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense, it doesn't cut as well, and it will actually warm up on the client if you're running at like a 5,000 RPM, like a prep. So not only will it speed up your time, your clients will appreciate it. And this is another thing, guys, is, uh, I call them guys a lot. Sorry, girls. Mm -hmm. um, multiple bits. So if I decide that my bit is toast, I'm not thinking like, oh, I have to get through this. I will just trash it and move yeah. on. Especially if you like, I broke a bit off in the e-file before. Oh. Like middle of the service. That's what it's just nice to have backups of everything because if you're in the middle of something and then you need to like you have to keep going. Yeah. So you need to be able to like have the right tools. You're not like, oh my electric file's broke, you're done. Yeah, exactly. Like people used to ask me that. Or like, well what if your what would happen if the power went out? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'd call it a day. Yeah. Done. I got, I got that question a lot too. I'm like, we wouldn't finish. <laughs> I know that I learned how to do nails with a hand file, but that's doesn't a very mean long I want time. to. Mm -mm. Just going through, remember those forms. Again, worked with the one hand while those forms were setting up. Don't try to take all your forms off at once. That way you don't ruin anything. Just let it sit. Now I know for sure it's dry. Okay, that's wicked long. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing on this one. So we're just going through, always pulling the bit towards myself. That way I don't go around the world. Around the world isn't like when you try to become blood sisters with them. Mm -hmm. You can cut them. And I'm looking down the barrel. This is going to show me any spots that I have to file down. I feel all jacked up today. I haven't even had that much coffee. Mon this Monday's been intense. <laughs> I've even got back from vacation. <laughs> we all have to be back on our best behavior. Mm -hmm. So we're just really turning that finger from looking at from every single point of view. The overhand grip is very key. Oh. 
This has really saved my career. Not only the electric file, but if I was doing it this way the whole time, it would still hurt my wrists. Mm -hmm. And uh, I probably, the career would probably be over. That overhand, it took me a long time to get used to. Yeah. And I just kind of forced myself. And every time I catch myself, I'd go back to it. Mm -hmm. So you just have to, you know, force yeah. yourself. But it's, I mean, my, my wrist is fairly straight. It just, it keeps me in a nice position. It just, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it's very not natural feeling at first. So if you're trying it, don't get discouraged mm -hmm. and give up. But over time, it's definitely beneficial. I really like that you have more control over your client. Yeah, and they're not constantly mm -hmm. trying to see what you're doing. Yeah. Like, I really think that it might be more important for me to see what I'm doing with this electric file than you. <laughs> but you tell me. Yeah. Um, get that flush back there. When product starts getting warm, sometimes it gets a little bumpy lumpy. But I don't worry about it. I just like the electric file. To the rescue. Okay. And I'm also just making staff move as needed. This is going to make me go faster instead of, and it's going to save my back. Oh, I hit that one. Yep. And always have a good client that reminds you of things that you did. <laughs> oh yeah, much better. Yeah, cool. So again, I've already seasoned my hand file because I do that when I first buy the box. That way I don't have to worry about cutting my client. I actually, you'll see me sometimes when I'm questioning it, I run it on myself because I'd rather cut myself than them. <laughs> do you do that ahead of time? Yes, so as soon as I buy, usually would buy a box of files, first thing I would do was season them. And do you just do it with the other file? Yeah, just to, I, I sacrifice one file. All right. Call it a day. One file for the rest. Yeah, it's worth it. And again, I think we've talked about it before, but get yourself good files. It doesn't doesn't have to be ours. But if you're sitting there biting a crappy file while you're trying to do nails, you're costing yourself time. Mm -hmm. I would literally go through three cheap files and it was frustrating mm -hmm. where I started using Young Nails and I'm not gonna lie, they're, they're, they're costly, especially since I'm using one on each client. But I go much faster, so I'm really saving money by having a file that's gonna do what I need. Yeah, it's very important to have all the right tools and quality ones. Just floating on that nail. I'm using my whole file. We're not chicken scratching at the nail. We're really filing. Whatever I'm doing, I try to do it with a purpose. So if you're filing, file with a purpose. Don't sit there and, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so gentle. Everybody does that at the OWC. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet of you. Could you just mm -hmm. file? <laughs> you won't hurt me. I'll let you know. This one, we're just going, first thing I do is I go right up the sidewalls. When you have a, what would you call that? Automatic system. Like I call it going into robot. When you're not thinking about the nails you're doing, basically you have a way you do it. I pick up my electric file, I file the sidewalls, I file everything. Then I come back with my hand file. First thing I do is I file my sidewalls again. Then I go through and blend everything in. When you go on automatic pilot like that, that's when you're gonna go fast. Mm -hmm. When you're not thinking about it or overthinking it. Oh, I like that one. I've been doing a lot of like mermaid stuff. No, not at sure least I'm not unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> I did give stuff a unicorn brush the other day mm -hmm. and then she gave it away. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Shane's daughter loved it though. So she <laughs> sent me a video of it. All that matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just keep going. I like to go through all five fingers on this hand and then we'll go through and see if I missed anything. Do I need to even anything out? And this could change on the daily too. Sometimes I'm like, oh, let's check out each finger as I go. And sometimes I'm like, oh, just one motion, go through. 
all the way up. There's a lot of things to nails that it's just, there's no real right or wrong. <laughs> like just do what works for you, yeah. you know? Um, sometimes like even if we did sets, they wouldn't be identical and yeah. we wouldn't do everything in the same order. It's generally the same, but just do what's comfortable. Well, that's why I love like, um, when we get a group of us together mm -hmm. because we're speaking the same language. We have the same techniques, mm -hmm. like the reverse technique. We, but we have little different tips and tricks of how we do it. Mm -hmm. And the way I do it might not be jiving with someone, mm -hmm. but you walk up and you're like, let me show you this little tip that I have for how I do it. And it might jive with them. Mm -hmm. And that's what works. Whenever you're going as fast as possible, that's when you know you're, you're dialed. Yeah. Solid. So I'm just checking them out, making sure they're all kind of the same shape, some by the same length, full we'll measure in a minute. Looking down the barrel for any bumps, lumps, anything that's going to cost us time in the end. I'm going to see something real quick here. I'm going to grab a little more white and just real wet. I'm not going to come back and file this. I'm just making sure that's nice and solid in the back. Yeah, sometimes it's an issue with the cuticle areas. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when you file, sometimes you can file out some of the color. Yeah. Especially in a spot that's supposed to be as thin as the cuticle. So she just fixed that and you won't be able to see it. Yeah, so it's just stop, fix it, be done with it. Um, I, I worked with that white really wet back there, so I'm oh, sorry. doesn't surprise me that I filed it a little thin there. Take care of it now. won't have to worry about it later. And again, I didn't put enough where I'm going to have to go back and file it. Just real nice and wet. Top coat right over the top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me get on your nail. That will help. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. What grit file are you using? I use the 150. This is my personal favorite. You guys use what you feel. I wouldn't use anything finer than this because then it's going to take forever. But um, I just like the feel of the 150. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm really getting it. Sorry, hubby. All right, guys. Um, I feel like I'm really going to get in there get tucked in that cuticle area mm -hmm. whereas um, something coarser I'm, I'm a little scared of again I've been cut really bad mm -hmm. so I've been traumatized people yeah I'm not scared of the electric file I'm scared of the hand file they're the worst it's like a really intense paper cut it is next these would be pretty pricey Let's think about it. And that's another thing you can be thinking about while you're doing the nails is like everything that you used and what the pricing is. Of course, as you're going, you're communicating. If you decide to use something else, you got to communicate that with your customer. Like, okay, you know, do you have a set price you want to be at? Mm -hmm. um, that look is this much, you know, uh, we could, we could edit a little bit and get it down to the pricing that you need. Yeah. Or they're good with it. Yeah. It should never be a surprise. Talk about a time killer. Trying to sit there and explain a price to a customer will be a definite time killer. Yeah, I would always communicate with my client when they were there. Like if they picked out a set, they maybe don't know what is in the nails. They just know that they like yeah. it. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, you know, oh, I want this set and they really just want the blue, you know? So I would just let them know like, okay, well, those are going to be this much. Is that okay? And then if not, we would adjust. Yeah. And that's the important part is like the communication. And we were talking about that kind of recently. It's like sometimes they show us this design and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to have to do that. And what you found out is they just really liked the color mm -hmm. or the shape of it. They didn't the, really want the whole thing. Yeah. And sometimes with like a lot of the encapsulated looks, they don't really care if it's encapsulated or just like a glitter press or something, you know? Yeah. And time saving is definitely going to be doing things on top mm -hmm. versus embedded because maintenance. 
I'm gonna come back. Okay. Yeah, you can just zip it off. So just go through, make sure we're nice and flush. Check that one. Let's measure for good measure. <laughs> Wow, just one? Dang! Mm -hmm. I forget which one. <laughs> don't, don't laugh at me, Abby. Okay, let's turn you here. Shorten that a little bit. Paper it in since we shortened. Okay. Let's see what we got. Let's dust you off and make them pretty. Finish making them pretty. Need any? Oh yeah, we need some white on that one. Steph, you're supposed to tell me these things. <laughs> so again, I'm not gonna just leave it and hope my client doesn't notice. Just gonna take it. Sorry, pop it in there. Kind of working with it, really wet, so I won't have to go back and file it. Yeah, I was always pretty anal about my nails. Like I would. Um always fix it I wasn't I, I always felt like it had to be something that I would want to wear well and if your client isn't happy they're gonna want to come back mm -hmm. and that again is gonna cost you time mm -hmm. so fix it here while you can okay let's grab your team bond we're gonna do some pretties just protein bonding the whole top that way we have no problem with our gel polish and I actually tag the very back that way if I did file to the natural nail a little bit the gel polish is going to grab really well come back to that one because I just added product okay now for the fun part let's decide what we're doing on what we're going to take kitty blitz caption conversion See something on the side. Get rid of that. Take our kitty blitz. We're gonna coat it. Sorry, let's get in camera. Nice and tight in that cuticle. This for me is faster because when she comes back, I'm not gonna have to take it all out like I would if I had used it as the gel um, a colored acrylic mm -hmm. this way I'm using it topical and when she when you maintain it it's gonna be super easy it's a really pretty color it's like rose gold yeah it's really pretty and let's do some heaven help me you got a lot going on mm-hmm might run over on this one. That's okay. So careful when I'm doing white. <laughs> My shaking really does not help. I don't know if this is the brush to use for it, but it was available. <laughs> let's see. Let's do this one. My own frame, sorry guys. It is so pretty. Mm -hmm. The name kind of annoys me, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. <laughs> Kitty Blitz, oh my god, it's a little too much like unicorn. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It's beautiful. I think this is one of our most popular um, slip pores. Yeah, I can understand why. Guys, I'm not going to sit here and stress about the glitter I'm wasting. I am charging her a lot of money. So, we're good. Yeah, I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different colored acrylics. Plus a full set, plus a custom shape. Yeah, I can't even do that math right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> so, eight, <laughs> 40, $40. And then the full set's 90. <sighs> oh, geez. Let's see. What else? 
full sets 90, 40, 130. And then the custom shaping, what do you think? This is like a $15 one? Mm -hmm. So 155, not bad <laughs> for as much work as it was. And you got some lots going on. Okay, we'll put it on the company card. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Habib's going to approve that expense, but <laughs> we'll try to get it by. Yeah. Oops. Ever so slow with the light. Even though I want to go fast, it ain't worth it in the end. I don't think my shakes were meant for white, but that's okay. All the way in. Let's finish you out. I'm sorry, Habib, is my shoulder in the way? Okay. He's going to kill me later, guys. <laughs> I won't be back. Next week's episode is not going to have you in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there's been an accident. <laughs> Hopefully, my head's not in that. Okay, guys, this color is insane. Mm -hmm. It's a must-have. I'm not usually like that, but it is. How long is all this curing for? Uh, as long as it takes me to do the other hand. I'm usually a minute. I'll do a minute final cure mm -hmm. for sure. Make sure we get those edges in. Okay, let's talk about... Don't need a top coat to heaven help me because it doesn't need top coat. Yeah, ghost time is a one-step shell, right? Yep. So we don't have to worry about it. It's actually really shiny too for not having a top coat. Yeah. And talk about a time saver. Mm -hmm. You could top coat it if sometimes I do. I'm like, I want to make sure it has the same shine as everything else, but ugh, this, the shine is pretty insane on it. And I don't want to get glitter. On the white. On the white. That's a good time-saving technique, too, is having different top coats. No, I want to top coat it. <laughs> that top coat just kind of makes everything... Oh, yeah. We'll fight the glitter. Yeah. I liked it. reason I did that, guys, is um, sometimes if you have any kind of streaking or anything like that, it's not really streaking. It's just kind of like you need to even it out, and that top coat just kind of calms everything down and gives you that really nice, a um, little more dimensional look to it. I don't know, it just works. So when in doubt, top coat. I went back and I protein bond this nail. Remember guys, that didn't cost me any time because I don't need to file it. It's nice and wet. We're good to go. Do you feel like if you had more time, they would turn out any differently? No, I'd overthink it and they probably wouldn't turn out as well. It's just a fact. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I know that we talk about time a lot. Now, cure some 60 people, seconds. Some people think that you seem like you're rushing, but... That's just me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's... I'm jittery. Instructional. We're trying to teach you how to be quicker. Yeah. There's one spot, so I'm switching out while she's curing to my cross cut. I found it. Look. Actually, I think this is the coarse one. I wouldn't use that on your natural now. Um because I saw something while I was painting that. She, it, a little bit of it ran. So while she's curing, just switch your bit and be prepared to fix it. And I'll show you what I mean when she pulls it out. Thank you. Such a helpful plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next. Okay, so this one is what I was talking about. So we're going to take the sticky off all of them. The conversion gel ran a little bit on her skin. So I switched that bit out. I'm going to take my cross cut and turn her hand. And I'm just going to take care of the run. And that way, 
She doesn't have anything she can play with. <laughs> or chew on. Or chew on. You are done. Beautiful. my favorite i just got back from vacation this set of nails reminds me of being in hawaii on the beach like it's honoring you it's it's beautiful <laughs> it looks like the water like in you know with the sand and the beach and the reef you did this in 57 minutes and some change you got a couple minutes to spare before the hour i think it's amazing how you utilize this product um Talk about any hiccups that you experience through the set. Anything major serious or pretty standard? It's typical. Yeah. Like coming across something that doesn't have enough product. Add Just more. Add more. Right. But don't stop. Stare at it. Hope hope the good Lord fixes it for you. <laughs> Just eh, more product. Move on. Yeah. Don't think about it. And, or like a little white got exposed. You know, right. I'm not going to sit there and chicken peck the back area so I don't take the white out that would take me more time right. than just adding a little white. Right. So it's just things like that. Once you get that kind of rhythm, and I always say it, it's like 99% of it is knowing what to do when you mess it when up. When you make a mistake, right. Biggest point here, that's the whole idea of real time is to show you how to do these sets with speed. This is what Tracy is truly an expert at. Trace, thank you for this set. Gorgeous yeah. Hawaii beach set. I wanna I, go. I miss it. We'll see you next week on Real